Shalom, peace, everybody. I'm coming to you once again in my vehicle. I'm out and about. So we're going to do the communion tonight in my car. Um, if it's your first time joining, my name is Julie. Welcome. May the Lord bless you and give you a revelation of Jesus and the finished work of the cross. Um, if you're going to join in, be sure you get your cracker, your juice, or your water or bread ready so that you can participate and receive all that the Lord has died to give you. Hi, Paula. <laughs> out and about, so I'm trying to get this in here. So um, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to go right into our teaching. Welcome, welcome. I, I just pray you have a wonderful revelation of Jesus tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that you're moving and you are watching and waiting to perform your word. Father, your word, you tell us that your scripture is not broken. It cannot be broken. We're so thankful for your word that's truth and full of life, that we can be confident, relying on you in all things. Bless each and every person who is joining tonight, Lord. Bless them and their families, and may they receive what Jesus died to give them. Let them have belief, Father God, in Jesus. Father, bless everyone tonight in their homes and their families, and I pray, Holy Spirit, that you be with us, moving and speaking to us tonight. We just say thank you, Father. It's all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So I message, hopefully, Barbara comes along. So um, let's see what the Lord's going to say to us tonight. I know the lighting's probably different, but that's okay. I'm not on here to have a flashlight on my face. I just want to be able to read. <laughs> but, all right, so we're going to read from my utmost, from his highest, and see what the Lord is speaking to us tonight about. This should be very interesting. Right, Paula? Are we ready for this one? All right. It says here, building on the atonement. Romans 61, or 6, 1, uh, sorry, Romans 6, 13. I couldn't get it out. Uh, Present your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. What is the Holy Spirit going to say? I'm excited right now. I cannot save and sanctify myself. I cannot make atonement for sin. I cannot redeem the world. I cannot right what is wrong, purify what is impure, or make holy what is unholy. That is all the sovereign work of God. Amen. Do I have faith in what Jesus Christ has done? I don't know, you guys. Do you have faith? He has made the perfect atonement for sin. Oh, Holy Spirit, you're beautiful. I, he says, am I in the habit of constantly realizing it? The greatest need that we have is not to do things, but to believe things. Amen. Right, Paula? Oh, he's so good. The redemption of Christ is not an experience. It is the great act of God, which he, he has performed through Christ. And I have to build my faith on it. That's right. If I construct my faith on my own experience, I produce the most unscriptural kind of life, an isolated life, with my eyes focused solely on my own holiness. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Beware of that human holiness that is not based on the atonement of the Lord. It has no value for anything except a life of isolation. It is useless to God and a nuisance to man. Did you hear that? It's a nuisance to man. Measure every kind of experience you have by our Lord himself. We cannot do anything pleasing to God unless we deliberately build on the foundation of the atonement by the cross of Christ. Oh, I'm loving this. Thank you, Jesus. The atonement of Jesus must be exhibited in practical, unassuming ways in my life. Every time I obey, the absolute deity of God is on my side so that the grace of God and my natural obedience are in perfect agreement. Oh, hallelujah. Obedience means that I have completely placed my trust in the atonement, and my obedience is immediately met by the delight of the supernatural grace of God. Oh, I'm loving this. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Beware of the human holiness that denies the reality of the natural life. It is a fraud. <laughs> Continually bring yourself to the trial or test of the atonement and ask, 
Where is the discernment of the atonement in this and in that? Amen. Praise the Lord. This is one of the reasons why I love this book. It's been a blessing since I started it, and we're almost finished. But this message is speaking loud volumes to me tonight on behalf of other things that are going on in my family life. And I want to say God is good. He's on the throne. Never give up. Don't be persuaded by what the enemy is putting in front of you because he is a liar. He's the father of lies. This is straight out of the Word of God. He tells us he's the father of confusion. He's the author of it. And he's full of lies, deception. All he wants to do is destroy you and your family and kill you. That's exactly what he's come to do. God tells us that. Prepare yourself. Seek the Lord. You are not holy. Nothing in you is righteous except the, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, who has come to live in you. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, I, I highly recommend that you just really think about that because it's the best decision you'll ever make. Amen. With that being said, I'm going to close this book up. This is a blessing tonight. Thank you, Father, for the word. Amen. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to read the, the wonderful love letter from our King. The Lord loves us so much, and I love how he loves us in his love letters. So let's see how he's going to love on us tonight. And this always is good because the Holy Spirit, he orchestrates this whole thing. I don't pick and choose. He divinely orchestrates everything I read. It's amazing. He says here, my child, you are a new creation. You're my precious child, and now that my spirit lives within you, I long to teach you about who you are. Let me start by defining what you are not, my child. You are not a slave to sin any longer. Oh, thank you, Lord. You are no longer under Satan's power. You are not even your own because I bought you with my life. Praise God. As you, Father, he says, as your Father, I'm asking you to set a higher standard for yourself. Let go of the old habits that are holding you back from becoming the new you. I can't take you to the next level of your faith <laughs> until you're willing to receive my instruction. Just as I asked Abraham to leave his comfort zone and go to an unfamiliar territory, I'm leading you away from your former life. And then I invite you to enter into my presence and receive my power to transform your life. Love your king who gives new life. He makes all things new. I love this about our Lord Jesus. That's one of the my most favorite things I ever hear him say is that he makes all things new. Don't you want to be made new, brand new? Amen. Oh, hi, Barbara. Lead me, Father, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I know this is a precious word for me and for so many others tonight who are struggling. God loves you. He has a perfect plan for you. The scripture is 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says what, what this means is that those who become Christians become new persons. They're not the same anymore. For the old life is gone. Oh, and new life has begun. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is a blessing tonight. <laughs> Amen, right, Paula? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so right now we're going to do some scriptures. If you're just joining, hit the like and share. Let's spread the wonderful Savior, the salvation of the world, Jesus, the finished work of the cross. Hit the like and share button. People are, are crying, dying, and sighing here in this world. They're lost, and they need a Savior, and it's Jesus. He died to save them. Amen? So let's spread and share the gospel, the wonderful newness of life. Amen. Get your, get your elements ready, your juice, your cracker, your water, or your bread if you don't have a cracker, and get ready. Because after we do the scriptures, we're going to go ahead and say a short prayer, and then we're going to take communion. Amen. I don't know whoever else is there, but welcome, welcome. Amen. <laughs> All right. So here we have Mark 16, 17 through 18. And these, these signs shall follow them that believe. Well, don't you love this? I love this. I love the Holy Spirit. 
He says, in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. You don't even know how much I want to go lay hands on the sick right now. (laughs) I'm sorry. I just get a little emotion there. But anyways, God is good. He's working. And even if you can't lay hands, there's power in our mouth. And the Lord will deliver. He will come to our aid and answer our prayers. In 2 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11, it says, To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything to whom I forgive it for your sakes, forgive I it in the, in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That's right. We are not. Believe it or not, you're not ignorant when things are going bad and he's doing wrong. It's He's always, all those things, evil is all around us. But we need to remember to forgive and walk in a loving heart. Don't carry any of those things on you because the enemy will come at you. Okay? Forgive those who've hurt you. Don't carry a heart that's hardened and especially not against the Lord. Amen. I don't know who that was for, but there it went. <laughs> then we have Romans six twenty three. For the wages of sin is death. That's right. But the gift of God is eternal life. Where? In Christ Jesus. That's our eternal life. This is the gospel we're spreading. And it's wonderful. We get to have eternal life forever. Amen. Then we have Ephesians 2, 8. By grace you have been saved. What is grace? Jesus is grace. Amen? For by grace you have been saved through faith. Through faith. And it's this is the gift of God. It's not something that you can give yourself. It's through Jesus Christ. That he is that salvation. That's the gift. Praise the Lord. And then we have Psalms 4, 8. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you, O Lord, will keep me safe. Hello, I love the way the Lord gives us sweet sleep and keeps us safe. Psalms 50, verse 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your scriptures, Father. May it touch the hearts around the world who hear this message that it would deliver them, and, and Lord, that they would bring all their cares and cast all their sorrows and burdens upon you, Lord, that they would understand how much you love them and care about them. Thank you, Father, for your word. It's truth. It's life. Sanctify us in your word, Lord, for you're the only truth. There is no other. Father God, put these scriptures in our hearts. Engrave it in there, Father God, so we can be a blessing to all those around us in this world and be a light shining in the darkest place for your glory. Oh, for your kingdom to come, Father God. We bless you and we praise you. Bless each and every person right now as we come together taking the communion, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that you give them a revelation of Jesus Christ and all that he died to give them. That they would they would believe on Jesus and receive. Hallelujah. It's all in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. It's time to receive from the Lord Jesus. So we're going to do the communion right now. I want to tell you this before we start, that the bread represents the body of Jesus. Jesus subjected his body to be beaten, bruised, torn. He was whipped, and all of his skin was ripped off of his body. He had slivers left. This, the first, the reason why Jesus did this is so that you can receive his health, his healing, his restoration, prosperity, everything. All the promises are in him are yes and amen and to the glory of God the Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. That is right. So tonight, as you take the bread, understand that Jesus took that beating so all of your sickness came upon his body. All sin, all the devastation in this world was put into his body so that you could be made whole, righteous, amen, full of life, healed, newness of life. He makes all things new. 
This is what he was doing when he took all those lashes. So see that tonight when you pick up that bread. Also for the, the juice, uh, this, re this represents his blood. He wants you to remember what he's done for you, that that precious blood in Jesus was the sinless blood. It's not tainted. It's sinless, precious. It makes you white as snow, covers every sin that you've ever committed your entire life. So past, present, future, if you've received Christ Jesus, you're covered by the blood of the Lamb forever. It's once and for all atonement. Jesus paid the ultimate price for you. Receive that tonight. You can walk in the newness of life. You are righteous and holy, and you can come before God the Father in the throne of heaven there, and he will listen to your prayers and answer your requests. Praise the Lord. All right, you guys. Let's do it now. Let's go ahead and... Um, Turn to 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26 and read together. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we're going to take your bread or your cracker, whatever you have there, and you're going to hold that up. And remember, we are discerning the Lord's body and remembering Jesus at the whipping post tonight. So receive, lay all and cast all your cares, whatever sicknesses, diseases, whatever is weighing heavy on your heart tonight. Lay it at the feet of Jesus right now and receive the wholeness from the Lord, redemption, whatever it may be. It is there. If you believe it, you can receive it tonight. Amen. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your broken body. We thank you for bearing our symptoms and sicknesses at the cross so that we may have your health and wholeness. We declare that by your stripes, by the beatings you bore, and by the lashes that fell on your back, we are completely healed. Amen. We believe and receive your resurrection life in our bodies today. So let us eat his flesh together. Now, likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So right now, what you're going to do is you're going to grab your juice or your water, and you're going to hold this up. Amen? And you're going to see Jesus on the cross. Jesus was nailed to the cross with his hands and feet. His side was pierced, and the crown of thorns were beaten into Jesus' head. And all the precious blood that flowed out of Jesus is that blood, that sinless blood that makes you righteous, has made you holy, has redeemed you from all sin, all faults, all failures. He didn't miss anything for you, praise the Lord. Now you've been made right, and you can come and rejoice in the throne of God and make your requests known, and he will answer you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood that has washed us whiter than snow. Your blood has brought us forgiveness, and it's made us righteous forever. And as we drink, we celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous. Oh, thank you, Lord, which, which includes preservation, healing, wholeness, and all your blessings. So let us drink his blood together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is our identity. For all of you people who have Christ in you, you have a new hope, a newfound glory in the Lord Jesus. 
His blood covers you. Don't forget who you are. Don't let the enemy lie to you anymore and, and put you in condemnation for mistakes that you make in this lifetime. You're covered by the blood of the Lamb, and there's nothing he can do about that. You remind him of that when he comes up against you and say, I am the redeemed of the Lord. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus covers me, and I am righteous and holy. That's right. You are. So walk in it. Stand firm. Be bold and proud of who God has created you to be. He's continuously working in your life, and there's nothing that he can't do to make everything better. So... Lift your head up. Jesus is coming. Redemption is near, baby. We're in the end times. Woo, and I'm excited. Hold your head up. Look up because his redemption is near. He's coming to get us, to take us out of here. Rapture us away. Rapturo. Harpaso. <laughs> Greek. Latin. Amen. Hebrew. Put it all together and you understand there is a rapture. It doesn't matter what people think. If they don't understand that, they need to go do a little more studying because we're not going to be left behind in this tribulation. We, we are loved and highly favored by King Jesus. Well, I love you guys. I thank you for joining the communion tonight. I pray that it's blessed you. Amen. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say a short prayer, and we're going to close out. Uh, we are doing prayer warriors for Christ. It is, it is late, so I probably would do my prayer at home. Um, so, but continue to pray and uh, without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5.17, pray perseveringly, don't give up. God is on your side. He loves you. The victory is in Christ Jesus. Sit back and let him win the battle for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us here tonight. Thank you that you've blessed this wonderful time as we've come together, believing and receiving and remembering Jesus and all that he did for us. Thank you, Lord, for the precious gift. We can never be thankful enough. Father God, bless each and every person here tonight and their families. I pray, Lord, that you move in them and create a new heart in them, Lord. Father God, that they would seek you out with all their heart like David. They would just run after you, Lord, and never give up. I thank you that you've blessed this communion, Lord. I just, I pray that you continue to be in their hearts and Holy Spirit move and speak to them tonight. We thank you, Father God. It's all in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, you guys. All right. Good night. Thank you for joining. I'll be back tomorrow between 6 and 9, and we can do this again. Give Jesus praise and honor. Hallelujah. I love you. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> amen, amen.